And right now we're breaking down the th stories from the three different levels of government with CTV's political commentator Scott Reed joining us once again. <laughs> Good to see you, Scott. Good to see you. Speaking of swatting balls around, let's talk about the U.S. election. Let, let's do that. And uh, it got kind of vulgar uh, indeed over the <laughs> exactly. weekend here. So we've got this That's presidential big. campaign. I mean... You know, you got Elon Musk, you've got that situation in New York, uh, you know, just a couple of days ago, and then you've got Kamala, yeah. Beyonce, et cetera. I mean, we're a week away now. A week away. And the big question that's always on people's minds at this point in the presidential U.S. election cycle is, will there be an October surprise and what might it be? And I don't think this race is so close. I don't think we're going to get a big surprise. I think we're going to get a teensy surprise, mm -hmm. a margin surprise. And so people are asking themselves, did it happen on the weekend? At this Madison Square Garden rally, which did descend into sort of just a soup of vulgarity, mm -hmm. multiple mm -hmm. speakers, you know, all sorts of terrible, awful things. But in particular, this one comedian calling Puerto Rico an island of garbage, yeah. using extremely sexualized and vulgar language to talk about Latinos. And even the Trump campaign said, too far. Okay, mm -hmm. bro, like too much. And they're a little freaked out about it. And the reason, and the reason it connects to next week is this race is razor thin. If you look at what the Harris's closing argument is and where they think they can win this thing on the margins, it's actually all these people that are traditional Republicans but are maybe considering voting for Harris this time because mm -hmm. they can't handle the toxicity of Trump. Yeah. And so those voters are exactly the kinds of voters who are going to be turned off by what happened at Madison mm -hmm. Square Gardens. Mm -hmm. So the, the Kamala Harris campaign is really hoping that they can leverage that, that in places like Michigan and Pennsylvania, where there are small but sizable pockets of Latino voters, that they can use this to their advantage, that it will have a chill effect on some of Trump's turnout. So watch for that. If Harris wins this thing by a squeaker, people will point back yeah. to this mm. comedian and go, buddy, turn the course of the election. I'm not predicting that, but it will be a fun little story to watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and this kind of, yeah. Uh, same comedian, Tony Hinchcliffe, was on the roast of Tom Brady as well, kind of yeah. known for being quite kind of racist. Kill Tony. Yeah, I mean, kill what do you Tony think podcast. you're going to get when you invite yeah, kill, kill Tony, Tony to come on? Kill Tony going to kill your campaign. Yeah. All right, <laughs> and turning to uh, provincial politics, yeah. we know that the fall economic statement is coming out, and we've been hearing a lot of announcements leading up to that. Man, oh man, I, and we talked about this last week. The Ford campaign, they are on target. Like, Every day, it's a new announcement, absolutely focus group. They know where their vote is, you know, whether it's bike lanes, whether it's rebates. So watch to see this government dole out cash, try to really go at the heart of the cost of living crisis, say to people, we're a government that's on your side. We're trying to put money in your pocket. We are relieving things that take money out of your pocket and with a heavy dose of fighting Ottawa. Mm -hmm. And this is the other piece we're going to see over the course of the next six months. All these provincial elections, anti-incumbent fever, mm -hmm, yeah. you know, even last night in Saskatchewan, you know, the, the, the far-right conservatives, Saskatchewan party, barely hung on to power. Mm -hmm. And so the Ontario guys are watching that and they're saying, let's not forget our ace in the hole which is that we're not Justin Trudeau. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to start running and watching this fall update. Even there, you'll see a lot of anti-Ottawa rhetoric. They want to run not against Bonnie Crombie, not against Marit Stiles. They want to run the next election against Justin Trudeau. Wow. So the question, of course, is how long does Justin Trudeau either hang on or stay on? Because there seems to be this, you know, there was this 24 MPs, kind of a deadline that kind of went over like nothing yesterday. Now we've got Yves-Francois Blanchet in the block talking about the yeah. deadline for a couple of bills here. How do you assess what's mm -hmm. happening in Ottawa then? This deadline will not pass with the whimper of yesterday's. Mm -hmm. And by the way, that 24 MPs, the internal dissension mm -hmm. within the party, that's still a gigantic, lingering, going nowhere soon problem for Justin Trudeau. But now we move from his own party to the other parties. And what we're going to see today is basically the Bloc Québécois is going to cut the apron string and say, we are not helping you. Mm -hmm. um, they wanted to see two pieces of legislation. One deals with uh, old age uh, right. supplements. The other deals with supply management. I thought the government was maybe working on and still might pull a rabbit out of its hat on supply supply management, say, you know, let's have a government-sponsored bill in the House of Commons, all parties could agree on, saying that our negotiating position would be firmly in favor of supply management. Maybe that would help uh, ease the bloc's concerns. The OAS, maybe negotiate something for lower income seniors. We'll, we'll, we'll see. But I think, you know, this deadline has come. And now I think we're going to see Blanchette say the Bloc Québécois is not going to be in the business of sustaining this government, which leaves Trudeau with only one option. As his internal pressures grow, right, he's going to have to be looking to the NDP. They are the lone lifeline available mm. to him. Right. And so you think to yourself, 
Is that sustainable? Like, you get on the other side of Christmas. The way Joe Beat Singh was speaking when he broke up the CNS? Yeah. 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 The word that you're going to start to hear a lot of is prorogation. Yeah. Because of the yeah. government's prospects of facing down its opponents in the House of Commons become more and more uh, injurious. The likelihood that they're going to prorogue and relieve themselves of the danger of a confidence vote grows greater. Mm -hmm. Okay, some very interesting insights. CTV's political commentator, Scott Reed. Always a pleasure. Thanks so much, Scott. So we'll, we'll see, see you, you back here, of course, on U.S. Election Day yeah. next yeah. Tuesday. So be we'll here, uh, yeah, along with all the other shock yeah, comedians. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs>